Hello, it's been a while since I've done a book review on this channel, like a whole video on one book. I just spoiled what the book was just then, but <laughs> anyway, it's in the title anyway, so honestly, it doesn't matter. I'm doing a book review today of Out of Love by Hazel Hayes. A lot of you will know that Hazel Hayes is a YouTuber. She has a platform um, on YouTube and she uses that to make films, but she also has a lot of content about writing and screenwriting. I met Hazel at Summer in the City, which is a YouTube convention, and I've been following her and her online content, YouTube, Instagram, um, Twitter, for years, so I wasn't going into this completely blind. And I also pledged for this book because she crowdfunded it on Unbound, which I think is a really cool way to publish books. So I was very excited when this arrived in the post. At first I wasn't sure whether knowing of Hazel and knowing her content kind of helped or hindered my reading experience of the novel. For example, our main character mentions after a long hard day curling up on the sofa with books by Nora Ephron or Joan Didion, um, and these are books that I've seen Hazel mention a lot on Instagram. Our main character also has a love of Star Wars, one that Hazel definitely shares and there's been pictures of her at every single Star Wars premiere and things like that. So there are a lot of similarities right off the bat that were present in the first chapter. Also our main character leaves a kind of stable job to pursue writing full time and I knew that Hazel left a kind of stable job to pursue YouTube and filmmaking full time. Hazel also documented a pretty bad breakup in her monthly vlog series called Time of the Month um, and a lot of people were praising her for being so raw and honest and vulnerable online. Um, and so this was kind of weird, it felt a little bit like I was a voyeur um, because obviously when Hazel is talking about it in a video she's choosing what to share and you don't really get a full look at it, nor should we, it's a very personal thing. Um, but reading this book sometimes I felt like I was getting a look behind the scenes and that I shouldn't be <laughs> and that it was kind of like reading her diary or something and I felt a little bit voyeuristic at some part, which obviously that feeling wouldn't really be present had I not known of Hazel and her content. So it's just something to bear in mind if you're following her um, or if you're not following her. It's just something that I observed. It's already a bad thing. I don't know why I'm even talking about it, but I just think it was interesting to me um, in my reading experience to like pick out little things. I was like, oh, that's I've seen that on Hazel's channel or Hazel's spoken about this. And I just thought it was an interesting observation, but I could be wrong. I don't know. There is a lot of condemnation of self-insert and the self-insert trope and that it's kind of lazy writing, whereas I don't really see that. I mean, obviously a lot of writers will draw on their own experiences and what they've gone through when they sit down to write a book. And also, because I've been such a follower of Hazel's channel and her Instagram and her Twitter content, I instantly felt like I knew our main character um, and I understood their references and I recognised their turns of phrases. So while it was occasionally jarring when I was like, oh, Hazel's spoken about that and it does take you out of the novel a little bit, it also instantly made me kind of understand what kind of person our main character was. And I don't want to sit here and be like, I know Hazel so well because of her online content, that's not what I'm trying to say. But just um, by watching her videos, by understanding how she speaks and what her kind of viewpoints are on things like films and politics and things like that, and also just her aesthetic on Instagram and the kind of books and the kind of language she's drawn to, it did help me to immediately understand um, our main character's kind of thoughts and feelings. Seeing these references did make the book feel instantly kind of familiar and comfortable um, and I could hear kind of Hazel's language and her voice in the novel immediately and I think that's really lovely um, especially when you're already a fan of someone's content to just get more of it is always a good thing um, and also because this novel again uh, the main character is Irish and her mother lives in Ireland still and there's a lot of references to I Ireland and Irish words and Irish culture and things like that so again it felt very much Hazel's heart and soul was in this book and I don't think that's a bad thing I don't think that self-insert is a bad thing if it's done as well as it's done here so on to the more detailed aspects of the book as in the rest of it and the writing style. I really love the writing style and I think always whenever I talk about writing style in reviews it's just easier to read an excerpt than just try and describe what the writing is like. Um, so obviously I'll just pick a small bit like the first paragraph of the prologue. Well there's only one paragraph there, there's only one paragraph in the prologue. So here is the prologue. There is a moment every writer knows long before they ever put pen to paper. There is a point of inception, inspiration, imagination Call it what you will, a magic hour of the mind made beautiful, like most things are, by its transience. It won't last, you can't keep it, no more than you could keep the spark that lights a flame. 
but you remember it with every ending, that moment before it all began, before your perfect creation was made imperfect by logistics and limitations. That moment is what I love most about creating something new, the idea, the spark, the beginning, when what might have been was still what might be. And obviously that's a nice little metaphor for relationships, when you reach the kind of sad ending of something, you long for the beginning when it was exciting, and that again is mirrored in the structure of the novel, something else that's uh, really apparent here that I can't believe I've not mentioned yet. Um, so it's called Out of Love, and it's obviously about a relationship ending and people falling out of love. Um, and the first chapter is their breakup, and then the book moves back in time, and the last chapter is their first meeting and their first kiss. So it's very sad, very bittersweet, because you reach the end and the chapter is full of hope at what's going to come, and you already know that it's ended badly. And I really like the way that the writing conveyed this. Um, a lot of the times big emotions were communicated through very small details. For example in the first chapter, so it's not much of a spoiler, um, but in the first chapter the kind of main character, who's unnamed by the way, that's why I keep saying main character, um, she realises that she might be able to move on because automatically instead of making two cups of tea for her and Theo who's come around to pick up his stuff, she's made one cup of tea and left it on the counter. So that in itself is like a really small kind of subconscious sign of her mind telling her that she's okay, she's no longer dependent on this person and she is able to live on her own. And this is done throughout the novel, there's another moment, uh, a very small moment, a gesture from Theo when they're on a train journey and then that's how she knows that he's in love with her. And I think it's really interesting because a lot of the time in life you think that these big uh, milestones, these big landmarks are going to be very theatrical and you're going to remember every detail but a lot of the time these big conflicting emotions are really mundane. <laughs> so for example like falling in love, falling out of love, these big huge emotions. You think that when writing about them you require big words, big speeches, big theatrical moments but it's often these intimate details that speak volumes and they say much more than any big, fancy, verbose, flowery language ever could. And Hazel understands this and she employs this regularly throughout the novel using small, intimate details to communicate something a lot larger. Whether it's a character's turn of phrase or whether it's again, like I mentioned, the cup of tea on the counter, these small moments that you don't realise at the time but then when you look back in hindsight were indicative of a much larger turning point or a much larger landmark in your life. There's been some criticism in the reviews that I've read saying that a lot of this book is telling and not showing um, and I agree there are parts where the MC, because it's in first person, says this is what I'm feeling or this is what my anxiety is like and you know this is my family and here is where we live and my mother is like this. Um, and I, <laughs> I never really understand that as a criticism, being like oh you're telling and not showing because it just doesn't make sense to me, it's storytelling. And I always think that content should dictate the form, so for example the content here is a very emotional, raw, honest novel about falling in and out of love, and therefore the form is this introspective, this intimate language where you're inside this character's head and you, and you know all the time what they're thinking and feeling. That makes sense to me. If this was a fantasy novel and it had a character every five minutes sitting down to tell you how they feel, yes that would be jarring and it would be telling and not showing, but I think the, the form here makes sense for the content. It makes sense that you're in her head a lot of the time because this is a novel about emotion and about things that aren't necessarily verbalised all the time or that aren't necessarily shown in the plot of a story. It's shown inside the character. It's definitely more character driven than plot driven and therefore this telling not showing makes a lot more sense and it sits well within the context of the novel and so I never really understand that as a criticism. People are like this was telling and not showing. I'm like and? Why is that a bad thing? I don't get it. One small criticism that I do have is that perhaps Thea was unlikable for too much of the novel. So I'd say for maybe like the first half, maybe even the first three quarters, Theo wasn't really a good guy. Um, and he's not really supposed to be, like you're not really rooting for him at all. But then at the end when you see how sweet he is at the beginning, I kind of wish I'd seen more of that dynamic of kind of them working really well together 
Um, because I feel like once I'd reached the end of the book, it felt like their relationship started well and then went downhill very quickly. Whereas I assumed it would be a more kind of gradual thing because they'd been together for four years. Um, and I would have liked to see a bit more maybe of the kind of goodness and like more of a gradual shift I'd say rather than like a very quickly he becomes problematic type thing but obviously I feel weird criticizing character when it's so much I mean I don't know but it's so much based on, on Hazel and experiences that I feel like this is inaccurate for this character I feel like I'm not in a position to say that when it could potentially be based on like a real person uh, so I don't know but I think as from a reading point of view if I was to pick out something that could have been a little bit stronger for me was more of a belief in Theo's goodness at the end of the novel which is the beginning of their story because I spent a lot of the book thinking how how am I gonna like like him at the end of this you know because he's been so shit um but that was the only thing that I think I would criticize ultimately as it says on the back of the book so I'm not being original at all with these hot takes <laughs> they're not even hot takes I don't know why I said that as it says on the back out of love is a story of hope and for me it's a story of hope in a lot of different ways yes it's a story of hope in the way that once you reach the end of something that's heartbreaking you think that you'll never be able to rebuild um, and obviously the, the first chapter which is the ending of their story there is this hopeful sense that she's looking to the future and that she's ready to move on now but also it's a nice reminder that no matter how badly things might end it doesn't negate how magical the beginning is many breakups end with people proclaiming that we were never right for each other I should have seen it sooner and while that can be true it can be true that people were never right for each other and it was never going to work that doesn't necessarily change how happy you were at some point and obviously that doesn't apply if it's an abusive relationship if it's, a, if it's an abusive relationship then yes you can 100% forget all the happy memories and just move on with your life as you should and actually I didn't mention it before but there is a good um, exploration of an abusive relationship in this book within a family and also within a relationship and I really liked how this book normalized going to therapy so after her abusive relationship she's having RMC is having panic attacks and she's having um, kind of dissociative episodes and she goes to therapy for it you know as you would expect if a character breaks their arm or if a character I don't know um, breaks their leg <laughs> like you expect them to go to a doctor and whereas when our main character is having anxiety problems and having panic attacks they go to a therapist as you should um, and I really think that should be normalized in books where you're dealing with big heavy obviously not everyone goes to therapy and not everyone needs to go to therapy after they've had a breakup but I just liked how normal that was that like hey I'm having trouble I'm gonna go and get some help and that was always just a normal part of our character's life it was never this big like oh should I or shouldn't I go to therapy like what does that mean does it mean I'm crazy it was just a normal part of her life and I really really liked that in a way it also gave me hope for my own writing as well because I often think that's not a plug by the way um, I've not published anything I've not written anything that you can go and read but um, I've always wanted to be a writer I made a video about it a while ago but I often think that my writing is so introspective and it's so based on stuff that I've thought and I felt and I'm always like who is gonna care this is so much about me that no one's gonna be interested and I guess the success of Out of Love just proves that wrong that a book can be very introspective and it can take so much from someone's real life experiences but it doesn't make it any less true or any less enjoyable as a reading experience so that was nice. I, 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 yeah, that was nice. <laughs> so yeah, ultimately I would recommend this for fans of Hazel and her content because obviously, like I've said, there's so much of her and her voice and her presence in this book. But then also people that don't know her content very well could also enjoy it. And also they wouldn't have the kind of experience of seeing references and things like that that might pull you out of the book. I personally didn't mind it too much, but just keep that in mind if you're thinking about whether to read this. But yeah, I ultimately do recommend it and I'm really looking forward to anything that Hazel writes next. I think she's a very talented creator, whether that's in film or on the page. I think she has a lot to offer and I really like her voice and her presence and I'm really looking forward to um, the eventual TV or movie adaptation of this. I know she's adapting it but I'm not sure if it's for TV or for film. As a filmmaker myself, I'm just very excited to see how it goes from a book to 
the screen like I was with normal people you know I think it's really exciting to look at what is working well in a book and how you adapt that and change it slightly for the screen because obviously film and books are very different mediums and that's something that I as a reader and a recent film school graduate I'm trying to grapple with because there's so much I love about storytelling in books and there's so much I love about storytelling in film and I'm always wanting to learn more about the differences between those and how I can be good at both because I <laughs> one day I want to write books and one day I want to make feature films so I'm very interested to see the process hopefully on Hazel's channel I think she thought she was going to make some videos documenting it the process of adapting a novel for the screen um, and the different ways in which storytelling works on screen and also on the page so I hope I've made sense I feel like this video is very rambly but um, if you read out of love please share your opinions and thoughts in the comments and if you haven't do you want to let me know just chat to me as always and I'll see you soon with another video soon bye